Okay, we'll get started straight away. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here uh, to the press conference uh, after the adoption uh, by the College of the uh, uh, Commission's proposal for the revised methodology to enhance the accession process. Um, given the, the, that we have very limited time, the um, Commissioner will make a presentation, then we'll have time for some uh, questions, but I would please like to ask you to keep uh, the questions to the topic because uh, out of respect, we don't have too much time, and Commissioner has to go to AFED. So, please, Commissioner, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for showing uh, interest uh, in what we do. Today, the College has adopted um, a new uh, methodology uh, for the accession negotiations. Uh, this is the first element uh, in a renewed uh, enlightened strategy this uh, new Commission uh, is uh, coming forward with. Uh, the second element in, in, in our discussions is also going to be about launching the accession negotiations with North Macedonia and Albania. And the third one is going to be a major economic uh, development plan uh, for the entire region, uh, which we hope that the Zagreb uh, summit uh, can endorse. Now, uh, the purpose of, the, um, of today's proposal is to re-establish a credible EU perspective uh, for the Western Balkans and to uh, make it very clear that uh, for the Commission and for uh, the EU as a whole, it is a top priority uh, to have stability, peace and prosperity in our region. And in that, of course, uh, enlargement uh, is a key uh, political uh, project, uh, which is uh, a firm, merit-based, uh, uh, and full membership uh, prospect for uh, the entire region. This is a geo-strategic geo, uh, investment uh, that we all need to make, and we hope that um, the member states will be partners in this. This is why we have revisited the discussions that we have seen uh, in October that unfortunately did not result in opening accession negotiations for the two countries. So we have been uh, reaching out uh, to try to address the root causes of the failure while not compromising on any of the principles uh, that underline the enlargement process. Now, uh, the proposal that you see today is a proposal for a revised uh, accession uh, negotiation methodology. We call it methodology, but maybe uh, best would be to call it uh, process or procedure. Uh, there are four principles around which the whole uh, methodology is based. Credibility, predictability, dynamism, and stronger political steer. Uh, these are the principles for which we would want to work. These are the principles that we would like to uh, ensure both for our member states and our public but also for the Western Balkan countries. So the whole process would have to be more credible for the both of us. It has to be more predictable, more dynamic, and more uh, political. It means also that we need to improve and strengthen uh, the process, and that we continue to have as a goal full enlargement, uh, and to have these, members, these states welcomed as uh, full EU member states um, of the Union. Now, we looked at how to improve the chances of, uh, of these member states, of, of these states becoming member states, and we have seen that uh, we have to improve the delivery of the reforms uh, in the region. This is a concern that has been raised by very many member states, not only those uh, who were critical or who have been opposing, but a much larger number uh, of member states. Uh, we need, we need uh, reforms to last, reforms to work uh, in this uh, region, and that will create uh, also the freedom for the people, but also uh, a more sustainable, more resilient economy uh, for the entire region. Now, if I want to go one by one uh, in the principles, what I see is that under the, what I can tell you is that under the credibility principle, our endeavor is to uh, make it uh, very clear what we mean, what we require from these uh, accession countries, 
and what is it that we offer uh, if, they, if they deliver. We want to reestablish uh, solid trust and mutual confidence uh, between the Western Balkan uh, and us uh, and our member states, but also in our public. Uh, we need to make it clear that if the reforms uh, are further uh, strengthened and uh, uh, mainstreamed, we will be able uh, to deliver also on our side. It also means uh, that we will continue with the merit-based approach and only a merit-based uh, approach. Therefore, assessment of the progress is key and the reinforcement uh, of uh, the assessment is key. The, the stronger political steer would be best served if uh, we have at all political level a more constant dialogue uh, with the region, but also if we had more a political reflection uh, on the achievements uh, of these countries. And therefore, we would like the leaders uh, of the European Union to have at least an annual debate about the progress these countries are making. This could be based on the Zagreb summit. Uh, we would like to include them at top level, ministerial level uh, engagements um, at all areas where uh, these countries are participating fully. For example, in the Horizon 2020, when ministers are discussing in the Council uh, the future of the Horizon 2020 or the usefulness of the Horizon 2020, these states should also be invited to be part of the discussion so that they know and see what it is uh, required uh, when you are a member state. Uh, the other element is uh, in political steer is that we have to include more in the member states when it comes to the monitoring of the progress. This is why we want to make better use of the, assessor, of the association uh, institutions, the association council, association committee, and the mixed parliamentary committee, where we will uh, have the opportunity to have um, real dialogue uh, about uh, the progress made, but also about the tasks uh, to be delivered. Now, the more, more dynamic process is best uh, characterized by the grouping uh, of the accession chapters. Um, I understand that this is very technical, uh, but if I want to, if I want to uh, make it clear, what we're doing is that we group the themes, the issues together that belong together. So we will have six groups of issues uh, in which we will be conducting these negotiations. It means also that these negotiations will be uh, much more overarching, much more comprehensive. That should also create an incentive on the side of the uh, accession countries to accelerate uh, their reforms. And uh, it should also create uh, the possibility to move faster if they uh, deliver faster. Uh, the cluster uh, chapters or clustered chapters uh, also bring about a reinforcement of the rule of law uh, conditionalities, uh, which means that we will open uh, with the rule of law cluster and we will close with the rule of law cluster uh, the accession negotiations. This will ensure that this issue will be continuously uh, monitored and looked at during the, um, during the whole process. The, maybe for the Western Balkans, uh, a very important offer uh, that we are making with the cluster system is that if they are ready with the reforms by the time we start the accession, uh, the uh, negotiations on the cluster, we are ready, as we will only have to uh, discuss the implementation of the Aki, we are ready on our side uh, to make everything uh, to conclude these chapters that belong to the cluster within one year. This is an offer from our side but the, but the delivery has to come from the other side. This way we can really speed up things, uh, given that uh, these days uh, we see that it takes six to eight years to close one uh, chapter of the negotiations. Now, uh, lastly, but maybe uh, most importantly, predictability. Uh, predictability means that we have to have clearly defined uh, conditions so that we both know what it is required and when it is achieved. Uh, this is why we will flesh out much more in detail all the criteria uh, and condition 
that we put uh, to these countries to achieve. And this is why we want to involve uh, all the member states in the monitoring uh, of these achievements. We need them uh, to share their analysis with us so that we avoid any uh, last minute surprises, surprises that we have seen already three times uh, before. And this is why it should be more inclusive uh, um, for them. Well, I don't hide uh, the fact uh, that one of the most difficult issues when we were putting together the package was that it is clear that in our public opinion and in our member states, uh, there's a very strong call that uh, we need to be able to reverse also the negotiations. When there is no progress or when there is backsliding, uh, clearly we also have to apply similar, uh, similar measures, meaning that we have to make it clear that we can also go backwards. So if uh, countries uh, fail to deliver or do back reforms on our side, similar actions uh, will be taken uh, when it comes to the accession, uh, uh, the accession uh, process. Now, after the, the communication will come a revised set of reports on North Macedonia and Albania, hopefully still this month. And we are working now uh, to accelerate the progress uh, in these two countries so that we can uh, have a decision uh, on uh, opening accession negotiations still before the Zagreb uh, summit. Um, I think at that stage I, uh, I stop here and I would be happy to answer any of your questions.